for the function f, whose graph is given, graph the antiderivative that satisfies the initial condition f of 0 equals 0. Note, to receive full credit, the antiderivative you sketch must not only have the correct shape, it must also take on its correct value, and we want to use the scale. All right, so this right here is a derivative, and we want to sketch the antiderivative. Okay, so that's what the problem says. That's what we're going to do. So first of all, if I'm going to have to be careful about uh, correct values, I'm going to create a chart. So I make my chart over here, x and my antiderivative values. And the, and if I look at this, I know I want to try one, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. So negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. And the only one I know for sure was given to me that f of 0, 0. So I'll put that here now. All right. The relationship that I have between a derivative and its antiderivative is the fundamental theorem. So the basic idea that the integral from a to b of f of t dt is equal to the antiderivative evaluated at b minus the antiderivative evaluated at a. That's the, re the big relationship that I have between the derivative and the antiderivative. And so I'm going to utilize that to fill this chart in. Okay, so I'm going to come over here and I'm going to say, all right, well, I know that this right here represents area. Area between f of t and horizontal axis over the interval of a to b. All right, so I know how to calculate area. And if I look at this carefully, I can see that if I siphon this off, that's just the area of a box, and this is the area of a box, area of a triangle, area of a triangle. It's pretty straightforward. Area is not hard to calculate because we've all had geometry or we all remember formulas of how to find area. So I'm going to start with this area here over the interval from minus 1 to 0. And why am I doing that? Well, if I integrate, make sure I have enough room here. If I integrate from minus 1 to 0 of f of x dx, I know that's going to be f of 0 minus f of minus 1. And if I can, I know f of 0, I can calculate the area here, and I can then eventually find out what that value is. So it's kind of like I have three things in an equation. Two I know, therefore I can isolate and find the other one. So I know f of 0 is 0, and I just need to find the area between f of x and the axis between horizontal axis for over the interval from minus 1 to 0. So if I look at that, it has a width of 1 and a height of 2. So this area right here equals 2. I'll just say area sub 1 so we don't get confused. And then if I want to solve for f of minus 1, that turns out that minus 2 equals f of minus 1. So over here, I go to minus 1, and I put in minus 2. Now I'm going to do this for every spot on here. And again, students might complain, that's a lot of work, Patricia. It doesn't matter. You still have to do it in order to do the problem well and to get a good answer, correct answer. So the next interval I'm going to work on is 0 to 1 f of x dx, that's equal to f of 1 minus f of 0. f of 1 is the unknown. f of 0 was given. I just have to find the area from 0 to 1. So that's this part, area sub 2. And that's the exact same shape as that, so that's also 2. So it looks like straightforward f of 1 is 2. And now the next interval I'm going to work with is 0 to 2. And again, the idea here is to use what I'm given to find what I want. Use what you know. Yeah, you can do 1 to 2, but you don't know that this one's right, per se. So you want to use what you're given, and that's f of 0. 
So I know f of 0 is 2 without a question. I just have to find the area under the curve above the x-axis from 0 to 2. So I know that this area here is 2. I just have to calculate this area here, which is actually half of that area. Or you can do 1 half base times height. But in the end, that area is 1. So the total area from 0 to 2 is going to be 2 plus 1. So 3 is equal to f of 2. So f of 2 is 3. And then the last one I'm going to do is from 0 to 3. f of x dx. That's the last one I have to do. So it's going to be f of 3 minus f of 0. f of 3 is the unknown f of 0 is 0. The integral from 0 to 3, well, I know that this first part is 3 units. But this part right here, area sub 4, that's the same shape as this. So it's going to be have an area of 1. But since it's below the axis, it will have an area of negative 1. So it's going to be 3 plus a negative 1 for that total area there. So I have 2 equals f of 3. So I put 2 here. So I have my chart filled out. All I have to do is then plot it on this graph and see what it looks like. All right. Now I'm going to rewrite the chart down here on the bottom so I can see it. So minus 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, my antiderivative values using the fundamental theorem, minus 2, 0, 2, 3, 2. And the last thing I have to decide then is how to connect the dots. It's not like it's just straight lines. So minus 1, minus 2, put a dot right there, 0, 0, 1, 2, 2, 3, and 3, 2. So how do I connect these? Do I just do all straight lines? Well, let's think about something from uh, Calculus 1. So if my derivative is flat, that means that the slope of my line down here is constant. And it's going to be constantly a slope of 2. So my, I connect these first three dots with a linear function. And if you kind of look at, not kind of, if you look at the slope of that line, it's 2. I rise up 2 and run over 1. So a constant slope of 2, a constant function in the derivative. Now this from here to here is a linear function. And we all know that if we take the derivative of a quadratic, we get a linear function. So my antiderivative has to be a quadratic if my derivative is producing a linear function. So I'm going to have to connect these dots, these last three dots, in a quadratic shape. So nicely curved quadratic shape. And there you have your antiderivative f of x sketched out carefully 